My name is Carlin Borisenko, and you are listening to the Actively Unwoke podcast. If you'd like to access archives of the podcast, you can head over to activelyunwoke.com slash podcast. You'll be able to listen to all the other episodes on the site and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, Google, whatever your platform of choice is. You can find that at activelyunwoke.com slash podcast. So today I want to talk about Kanye West. Now, I don't know much about Kanye West other than some people consider him to be a genius. Some people consider him to be a lunatic. He was married to Kim Kardashian. He acts crazy sometimes. And he really, 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 really likes to piss off the woke left. He pisses them off all the time. He's been pissing them off for years. And now he is getting canceled left and right and back and forth and up and down and in every which way they possibly can because he made what people are saying are anti-Semitic remarks. Now, I'm not going to comment on the the claims that he made about the Jewish people. To be quite frank, for the purpose of understanding why Kanye West is being canceled right now, what he said about the Jews actually doesn't make any difference because the woke left does not care about anti-Semitism. The right doesn't care about anti-Semitism either, by the way. Neither of the political tribes actually care about anti-Semitism. It's just something that they use when it's politically convenient in order to get infiltrators off of their radar. But let's, let's back up for a second. Why is Kanye West being canceled if Black people are at the very top of the woke oppression hierarchy? I write about this in my book, Actively Unwoke, The Ultimate Guide for Fighting Back Against Woke Insanity in Your Life. I talk about the woke oppression hierarchy, which ranks people unofficially and not without flexibility because sometimes it does shift. But generally speaking, it ranks people from most oppressed to least oppressed. And there are different hierarchies involved. You have a hierarchy for skin color because race is the number one issue that the woke left uses to divide people. And then you can have hierarchies around other identities because sometimes we need to incorporate intersectionality and all that other stuff. That's another podcast for another day. But in regards to race, the woke oppression hierarchy considers the most oppressed people to be black people. And and the darker your skin color, the more oppressed you are. Generally speaking, underneath that, you're going to have Native Americans or indigenous people. Generally speaking, underneath that, you're going to have Latino or Latinx. Generally speaking, underneath that, you're going to have Asians. Generally speaking, underneath that, you're going to have Jews. And at the very, very bottom of the woke oppression hierarchy, are going to be white people. Because, according to the woke left, white people have all the privilege points in society, and therefore, they cannot possibly be oppressed. Now, I'm not suggesting that I agree with any of this. I'm simply trying to explain how the woke left assigns virtue points to people based on whatever immutable characteristics they have. You'll also know I said, generally speaking, quite a bit when I was explaining that. And that's because... The woke oppression hierarchy is not rigid. It is flexible. Identities can go up and down the woke hierarchy. For example, back in, when was it? Oh, gosh. I think early 2021, when the massage parlor shooter in Atlanta made headlines all over the place because it was unfortunately a sexually addicted young man who went and shot people in massage parlors and most of the people that he shot were Asians. Well, in the media, this was portrayed as a hate crime against Asians when in fact it didn't really have anything to do with them being Asian. It had to do with the fact that this guy had a sex addiction. And all of a sudden, Asians went from basically the bottom of the oppression hierarchy all the way up to almost the top under black people. They never went ahead of black people because you can't go ahead of black people in the woke oppression hierarchy, but they went right underneath. And this was true for several months up until I remember the day it shifted. The day it shifted 
was the day that Derek Chauvin got convicted in the trial about the murder of George Floyd. And then all of a sudden, on that day, everyone forgot that Asians were oppressed and Asians went down to the bottom of the hierarchy again. Really, the position for most groups in the hierarchy, except for black and white, those are pretty rigid. But for all the other groups within the oppression hierarchy, their position in the hierarchy and how many virtue points or oppression points they might get on any given day shifts entirely based on the news cycle. So you heard me say that Jews, generally speaking, are near the bottom of the woke oppression hierarchy. And that, quite frankly, is because the woke left shits on Jews all the time. If you want to listen to real anti-Semitic remarks, listen to some of the things people say about Israel. My gosh, especially on the progressive left. Now, I'm not going to take a position here on Israel versus Palestine because it's not the subject of this. Also, I can see arguments on both sides. I, I, I don't think the U.S. should be involved in anything either way, so I'm not taking sides. I think we, they should, we should not be involved in any of it. But my point is this. The woke left's canceling of Kanye West has nothing to do with anti-Semitic remarks because the woke left is incredibly anti-Semitic. But when it's people on their team, they somehow overlook the anti-Semitic nature of their remarks. So what is it about then? Why is Kanye West getting canceled by his agent and Adidas and, and having his documentary canceled and, uh, and having his Twitter account like blocked or banned or whatever is going on there? Why is this happening? It's not because they care about the anti-Semitic remarks. It's because Kanye West has taken them out of power. And now they need to put Kanye West in his place. So this might be confusing to people. You said, Carlin, you just explained to us that that black people are at the absolute top of the woke oppression hierarchy and that can never change. And so why is Kanye West getting canceled? He's black. He should be at the top of the oppression hierarchy. Well, it's a little more complicated than that, isn't it? Because as I've previously explained on this podcast, the term white or whiteness is not really about the color of your skin. They just frame it that way because it gives them power to frame it that way. The term white or whiteness is only and exclusively about who owns the power structure. That's it. It is about Who owns the power structure? Who is in charge? Who is the boss? Who is the property owner? Who is the capitalist? To steal a phrase from Joe Biden, the reason that Kanye West is getting canceled right now is because the woke left don't consider him to be black. They don't consider him to be black. Joe Biden said, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Well, of course there were black people who voted against Joe Biden. Of course there were, and of course they're still black by skin color. But insofar as what the woke left care about, they aren't black anymore because they didn't cede their power to what the woke left demanded of them. The woke left does not care about black people. They don't care about fixing racism. They don't care about social justice. They don't care about any of those things. Think about it for a second. Racism is the God that these people worship. Racism is what they talk about all the time, all day, every day. They see racism in every interaction, in every institution, in every conversation. They very literally see racists around them all the time. They're so obsessed with racism. Racism is the god of the woke left. Would you kill off your god? That is why the woke left doesn't care about solving racism. They don't care about making the world a more fair or just place. It is their god. 
if they killed off their god, they would have nothing else to worship. So no, they don't consider Kanye West to be black because Kanye West disrupts their whole game. Kanye West didn't bend the knee to what they wanted. And so once they realized that they couldn't use Kanye West as a tool to gain as much power as possible, well, from that moment on, he had to be canceled, didn't he? And then Kanye West, being that he doesn't bend the knee to everyone, or to anyone rather, and then Kanye West just kept fighting back against them and kept and kept staging these things like wearing that White Lives Matter t-shirt, which I disagreed with for other reasons that I'm not going to cover on this podcast. Don't get me wrong. It was a funny joke. And, and I was amused by the uproar over it as much as anyone. There are just other reasons I have issues with that particular strategy. But you know what? It really did reveal who the woke left really were, right? But they're not canceling him for that. When he did that, when he pushed back on them, he took he took them out of power. That's what they're canceling him for. And then when he said something about the Jews, they don't care about whether or not he's being anti-Semitic. That was just an opportunity. This is what I want you guys to understand. This is a constant game of power. It is a constant tug of war to see who can gain the most power. So Kanye West doesn't bend the knee to what the left wants. He throws it in their faces repeatedly over the course of years because he's been doing this a while now. And then he had the gall to go to Fashion Week and wear a White Lives Matter t-shirt with Candace Owens. That may have been one of the last straws. And so when he made that tweet about the Jews, he wasn't canceled because people were offended by the tweet. He was canceled because he gave them an opportunity to put him in his place, to remind him about who is in power, to remind him about where his money comes from. Now, whether or not it's going to work, I mean, that remains to be seen. Kanye West seems to have a million resources available to him. And, and, and fortunately, when you have the type of resources and connections that Kanye West has, you know, if someone takes a multi-million dollar or even billion dollar contract away from you, it kind of, you can replace that with other things. And so it's not as threatening to Kanye West to be canceled by these people as it might be just an average person, the person listening to this podcast right now, or even the person giving it. And so what the woke left was trying to do when they canceled Kanye West was to take their power back because he so effectively showed the world who they really are. And so skin color means nothing to them. Whiteness is about who owns the power structure. Kanye West owns the power structure. One of the power structures, he's literally an entrepreneur. Entre- Black entrepreneurs to woke left, usually liberal white lady progressive activists. Black entrepreneurs are some of the most scary people to these to to the liberal woke activists because black entrepreneurs disprove every single assertion that the woke left has made about how oppressed black people are in America. Kanye West is incredibly threatening to them. Because he is a self-made black entrepreneur that went against the narrative. That is why they must cancel him. And the tweet was just an opportunity to do so. If it hadn't been that tweet, it would have been something else eventually. There is no escape from them once they have you in their sights. And people really need to understand this. The four goals of the woke left are always and forever the same. Gain as much power as possible. Destabilize the system. Attack capitalism. Usher in their Marxist utopia. That's it. That is all they want. 
They do not want to solve racism. They do not want to solve anti-Semitism. They do not want to make the world a more fair and just place. There's a line in The Handmaid's Tale, a book I love, but but and many on the woke left do too, but, but this line is a little problematic for them because it says, and it said it in the show too if you've watched that, better doesn't mean better for everyone. It always means worse for some. The woke left know that there is no such thing as a utopian society, which is filled with fairness and justice and and everyone has the exact same outcomes. That's just not the way it wor- the world works. Life is unfair. Luck has a lot to do with it. Hard work has more to do with it. But the woke left aren't trying to make a society that is better for everyone. They're only trying to make a society that is better for them. Because they truly believe that if they usher in that little communist utopia, that they are going to be the ones in charge, that they're going to be able to be poets and artists and and not have to worry about the burden of having that nine-to-five job. That's why their goals are always and forever. Gain as much political power as possible. Destabilize the system. Attack capitalism. Usher in their Marxist utopia. Kanye West needed to be canceled by the woke left because he threatened their power. And also because he is an unabashed capitalist. You know, on my YouTube channel, we're doing these things called Socialism Saturday, where we watch socialist content, legitimately socialist content, not CNN socialism, legitimately socialist content, and we talk about it. And I have to tell you, The talking points that we're seeing in the legitimately socialist content are the talking points of the Democratic Party today. Every Friday on my second YouTube channel, youtube.com slash actively unwoke, we have happy hour in which we watch a woke training from start to finish. We watch every little bit of it, the boring pieces, the cringy pieces, all of it. And in almost every single one of the trainings that we have watched over the last two years, they have mentioned capitalism as their number one enemy. The woke left is not afraid of white people. They're not afraid of straight people. They're not afraid of cisgendered people. The people they are afraid of are the capitalists, the people who are personally empowered, the people who, no matter what they say or what they do, will not bend the knee and rely on the state to provide for them. Kanye West is a capitalist. He's a self-made man. He doesn't bend the knee to anyone. He says whatever he wants. He does whatever he wants. You might agree sometimes with him. You might disagree sometimes with him. You might think his music is amazing. You might think his music sucks. You might not care about his music at all. You might think his words are offensive. You might think that they're nothing to sneeze about. And regardless of where you fall on any of those issues, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you understand the underlying nature of why. This is happening because it's not about his skin color. It's not about the remarks he made about the Jews. It is only because the woke left needed an opportunity to cancel him because he took them out of power by not bending the knee to their rules. And so he had to go and he had to be made an example of so that no other black entrepreneur ever does that again. That's why Kanye West had to be canceled. He threatened their power. You must look at every single thing the woke left does through that lens. When you look at it through that lens, you will understand the underlying motivations behind it. All right, guys, that's all I've got for this one. Subscribe if you liked it. And I really would love it if you could leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Let people know you enjoy the podcast. If you do, if you don't, you know, keep it to yourself. I don't know why you would have listened to it for 20 minutes if you didn't enjoy it. But hey, I do have some hate watchers out there. So maybe that's what you're doing. But guys, that's all I have for this one. Thanks for spending some time with me. We'll see you soon.